Well, everyone's talking about it, so I guess we should take a look. Welcome to First Impressions. Hello, yes, everyone is talking about this kit, so we're going to give it a first impressions. So this is the second release from MiniArt of a 1 to 48 scale kit, and it's also the second release of the P47D. So earlier in this year, as I record this, December 2023, they released this as a basic kit, and you've got, um, you got slightly different artwork, um, and you got um, uh, the the basic plastic kit and some uh, and what have you. This is the advanced kit and is just being released at the moment as I record this. It's probably been available a couple of weeks now. Um, so this is kit number four eight zero zero one. The basic kit is four eight zero zero nine, and currently. Um, on pre-order, they also have 48023, which is a P47D 30RE. So there's obviously more coming around this theme. So the Thunderbolt is um, their first foray into things that fly. They've done some helicopter bits and pieces and stuff, but always in 1 to 35 scale. So I'm expecting this to be of MiniArt's usual standard, a lot of parts but also a lot of detail so uh, let's have a look so we've got nice artwork on the top uh, we've got um, uh, warning instructions and contact details on the side you'll notice that it says Poland um, mini art relocated from Ukraine um, a few months into the, the Russian invasion um, the sides pretty much emulate um, the top there's nothing different on there and then if we go to this end we get uh, an image of the decals and the three paint screams and I think in the basic kit you just get two paint schemes so uh, yeah we got a nice one with checkers which I've got to say I um, I really quite like that one um, the one that's on the box art and then we've got this one which has got um, painting of a a lady who seems to have mislaid her clothing. Um, so uh, this uh, does tell you who they are. 62nd Flight Squadron, 56th Flight Group, 8th Air Force, July 1944, pilot Captain uh, Frederick Joseph Christensen. Um, or the one on the box cover is 61st Flight Squadron, 56th Flight Group, 8th Air Force, June 1944, pilot Lieutenant Colonel Francis Stanley, Gabby Gabreski. Um, and then this final one here is 82nd Fighter Squadron, 78th Fighter Group, the Duckford Eagles, 8th Air Force, Duxford, September 1944, pilot Captain Ben Mayo. And that one is really speaking to me, I have to be honest. So let's have a look inside and see what we get. So, inside we get the instructions, which were in that bag, but I had a, a quick sneak peek. Um, we get our decals, which are in the same bag as the instructions, so I took them out. Um, and then we get one bag, quite familiar for mini art. We get one bag with our clear parts in a, a separate Ziploc bag by the look of it and an envelope and we all know what's in the envelope that will be some photo etch so yeah and already I can see we've got a lot of parts so let's have a look at the instructions first so if you've built um, a mini art kit before this will be a, a fairly familiar layout um, where we get um, this side profile of the model then we get a technical drawing of the model it tells you what you've got included, gives you the part number, um, and we've got an A4 stapled colour uh, build manual. Um, and it's telling us we've got um, a highly detailed plastic model kit, which is always reassuring, 
photo etched parts, clear plastic parts, which is good. We don't want to not have them, do we? Um, hatches can be open, open, can be assembled in open or closed positions. Three types of wheels, to understand what that means. Engine and combat compartment accurately represented in the model. Decal sheet for three variants. No doubt there'll be loads of aftermarket uh, decals coming out for this. Right, then as we turn over, as per M Mini Arts way, we start seeing the, the paint schemes. Uh, and I always think that's quite a good idea, having the paint schemes at the front. I see the logic of having it at the back because you finished the model, now you're going to paint it. But actually, you, you're a bit painting as you go is the reality. So having the paint schemes at the front make more sense. Now, usually Mini Art have half of them at the front and then half of them at the back because well, I don't know why. But, um, but so far, we've got the first two here and it helps you make that decision as to what you want to build and that might include some of the options in the instructions as you go so if you're building a you can't put the drop tank on or or something like that anyway uh, what we've got is nice colorful um, instructions there they're showing you the model actually sort of weathered and what have you so it gives you a little bit of inspiration doesn't it um, and it's pointing out all the decals, all these yellow numbers are the decals. Um, and then the green numbers in the boxes will be the paint colours. So it looks like you're painting on the white, white and black stripes. Then as we go to two, that's this camouflage um, scheme here. And again, yeah, all looks really nice. Oh, okay, and then we've got our last paint scheme here. So we've got all of them at the front. And um, this is definitely the one I'm gonna do. I love the checker. So as much as I'd like there to be a nice bright tail or something, I really like the uh, checker on it. So I think we're gonna do that. And that, I'm, I'm fairly sure is decals. Then we've got our part map and the um, all the sprue numbers are in place so you can cross reference it and find your parts and we're going to have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty two um yeah twenty two sprues Mini Art do a lot of small sprues for interchangeability of parts and projects, so they do uh, think ahead. So 22 sprues might sound like a lot, but in anyone else's terms, it's probably about four, four or five maybe. Um, and then we've got two decal sheets. So we've got the uh, overall markings and then the stencils. And um, I imagine the stencils are fairly common, so that allows them to change, uh, change the decals. Right then, then on page seven, according to this, we start the build and step one concentrates on the on the seat. Now, um, earlier today, I did another video and reviewed um, a 148 scale um, uh, Sea Fury uh, from Airfix. And albeit uh, a six year old tooling, the seat was one molding and didn't have harnesses. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces there um, to put together, um, which has molded on, I, th I think, is that right? Yeah, has molded on harnesses. But they also give you an option, and that's the basic build, because they also give you an option for an advanced assembly, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces in there, and you've got photo etch for the harnesses. So that's amazing, because one of the one of the things that people complain about the most with their fix kits is not having harnesses. So that's really cool, I like that. Then we've got uh, putting the seat into the um, floor pan, and then we've got some controls and uh, the control stick and bits and pieces going in. Then we're adding some uh, the, the pedals, 
bulkhead behind the seat, front bulkhead, and one of the side walls. We've got a blow up of that side wall there, which is telling you um, colours to paint and decals to add. So nicely detailed. Then we're doing um, this other side. Uh, and again, there's another blow up here, which has all the different parts being put on it. Painting instructions, decal instructions. Wow, lots and lots of detail going in there. Then we're putting all our uh, dials in, our instruments. And we've got a little blow up there of the uh, cockpit decals. Um, yeah, so it looks like 1A, 1B, 1C, it looks like that's one big sheet, but we'll have to have a look at it um, when we look at the decals. Right, dropping over to step five, um, and we're starting to work on the first part of the fuselage. So that gives us, um, we've got some little bits going in, and that looks like they're building up some form of hinge or something there. And we've got some small parts going in, which includes the aerial, which, which is, this is a nice idea. It, it's like a T-shape and it locks underneath the hole, so it locks into place. And then when you clip the fuselages together, no doubt that, that closes that up and centres it, so that's nice. Then we're putting our little cockpit tub in. It's quite a small little tub, really. And the two fuselage halves together. Um, we've got a little item we're adding there. And that then takes us on to the assembly of what looks to me like the tail wheel. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. Loads of parts. Absolutely loads of parts. So, yeah, um, it looks like we're going to have um, sidewall writing on, on the tyres. And it looks like the tyres have a flat from the drawing, but we'll see when we get the parts. Okay, so we've done all that. Step eight takes us to the engine. Um, right, okay. So this is the advanced assembly of the engine for experienced modellers. Um, right, and that little star, that means provide the materials yourself. That's a scratch building star. So... What it's telling us is we need to put these in, but we need to make them ourselves. So that's these little hoops here. Okay, 0.3 millimeter diameter and 4.4 millimeters long is what it's saying. Um, so then we're adding uh, this here, which I think is push rods, but I don't know a lot about engines, so. If I'm wrong, uh, just giggle to yourself. Um, and then we're putting them on the, the back as well, by the looks of it. Um, then we've got all this tubing and stuff going in, this pipe work. So that is a single moulding by the looks of it. So that'll be interesting to see what the cleanup will be like on that. So that plugs into there and then we plug the other engine, because that's two, it's not the same one. Uh, going together and it shows you a nice forward on picture with how everything is lined up so that's really nice um, then we've got more uh, tubing going on which I'm guessing is the exhaust by the looks of it um, got some more parts going on we're building up the, the uh, nose cone there with um, with stuff and then we've got um, uh, these usually have wires coming off them. I think they're for the ignition leads, I think. Um, again, what I know about engines, you could write on a very small piece of paper. Okay. Um, so then, so that must be the completion of the engine because, yeah, because it's then saying basic engine uh, assembly. So... Yeah, okay, so the f what I can see we're missing is, well, we're not doing that for a start. And we're not, it doesn't appear that we're adding all the pipe work. 
so all of this lot doesn't appear to go on otherwise it looks the same um, so that's fairly dumbed down but how much of it you'll see with the cowlings on I don't know and whether we can build it, build it with the cowlings off um, I, I'm not sure yet um, so right all sorts of bits and pieces being built up here it's really detailed at this stage and we've got photo etch parts going on very 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 nice indeed when we get to step 13 we're building up uh, the air intake used only for open hood d24 all oh, right so we can have the uh, engine cowling open now oh, that's really interesting good um, so we so basically we're adding some interior detail that will be visible when the hoods open or could be so we put in all that in advanced assembly open hood variant okay so that leaves you with the engine exposed um right got yeah and then this is the closed hood variant i think i'm going to have to draw some lines just to break it all up because it's a bit hard to focus um, I don't like it when the instructions aren't divided up. Um, so yeah, that's us building the um, engine cover there. Um, so we've got two fitting instructions, um, the basic and the advanced. You can see they look very different. Guess which one I'll be doing. Right, step 16. So we're adding the tail there. Uh, which looks like it might be hinged. Um, then we're building up what looks like part of the uh, gear bay and we're putting the engine cover on, uh, if you should so wish. Then we're putting the uh, tail wheel in um, and we've got open doors or we've got closed doors as a single piece and there's another detail piece going in there. Um, and then we're building up the landing gear bay, which then carries on um, on here. So this is this is your wing. Looks like we've got a fairly detailed interior once we put this bit in. And it's saying use for only for open hatch on the wind. I'm sure that should say wing. Um, so right okay so that we got little photo etch parts there so that's so you can see the guns ammunition boxes going in um looks like we've got some interior engine de uh, wing detail as well um advanced assembly open hatches on the wing right or basic assembly where you can have it closed i imagine you could do bit of either really if you wanted to uh, then we've got some drilling out to do um, for use with the rocket launchers they don't give you a diameter for drilling so it's go small and widen it as you need and step 24 we're adding um, the flaps use for variants with flap down okay which means we must have a flap up uh, use for open wind hatch right okay there's loads of options in this um, use for variant with flap down advanced assembly uh, and then basic assembly right okay so there's a little bit of trimming to be done there if you've got the flaps down Right, and then it's showing you how to show these things up with all the ammunition on show. Got you. Right, interesting. Um, and then it looks like it takes us through that same process again on the other wing. Uh, yes, it does. And then running down the side, step 32, this strip, we've got the uh, wheels. So we're building up the wheels with a hole in and no hubs, lawfully, that means we can we can put them on a cocktail stick and paint them nice and easy. And we've got chassis normal and chassis under load. So it said there was three different wheels. 
this must be part of the reason. So what have we got down here? Um, left chassis, right chassis, left chassis, right chassis. Right, okay. Quite complex, but we've got decals going on it to bring it to life. Um, no uh, brake cables, so you'd have to do some research and add that yourself. Why wouldn't you with the model that this, that's this detailed? Um, and then we're going back to the wings if you're doing flap down. Oh, that's carrying on from there. It's a little bit disjointed, isn't it? Um, step 38, we're adding the um, wings. Now, there's no wing spar here. Um, so how well that's all going to go together and how strong it's going to be will be interesting to see because the, generally most model companies have moved to wing spars because it helps you get the geometry correct and, and helps with the fit. This is a sort of a more old school tile where you're just shoving it in. I mean, there's not even a biscuit fitting. There is on the tail, you've got little biscuit tabs there, um, but you haven't on the wings. So that will be interesting. Interesting indeed. Right, then we've got um, the, the wheels going in, the landing gear going in. Step 40. Looks like we're on sort of final fit out here. Uh, we've got the propellers going on. We've got the uh, canopy going on. Um, we're building up the pylons. So uh, right pylon, left pylon, empty pylon. So you can show one empty if you wish. Um, and then we've got options on the armaments with the paper drop tank, um, an ordinary drop tank uh for 200 gallons and then a 150 gallon drop tank and a 75 gallon drop tank so lots of options there and then as we go over armaments continued uh we've got bombs which have individual fins so that's really interesting um that means they should be nice and thin smoke grenade more different bombs rocket launcher tube and then it shows you them all being mounted on um, and then we've got a little note here not bazooka not used with fuel tank under wing together okay so i'm guessing that's the bazooka is it k yeah bazooka k so that's the rocket launcher so you don't have fuel tanks if you're using the rocket launchers i guess that was for safety reasons that I think then completes your build because we're then on uh, stencils. So we've got all the stencil marks, plenty on there. They've highlighted them in a sort of pink color, which is really nice because you, they really stand out uh, and that really helps you with positioning. Very, very nice. And then, oh, right. Then for experienced modelers, there is a wiring diagram of the engine. Blimey, 148 scale. Okay, interesting. Um, so it shows you the front elevation, the rear elevation, a side view of how those tubes are running, then a top view, and I guess that's a rear view, that, that one face on. Okay. Okay, that... Why did they not put that near where you were doing the engine? Then we've got a wing diagram of left wing and a wing diagram, uh, sorry, wiring diagram of, of the right wing, which is really nice. That will add some real authenticity to it. Yeah, I like that. But again, um, you're doing that under your own steam. And then finally, on the last page, we've got a picture of the various different ordnance with the colors with their decals, and then we've finally got our paint chart, which calls out Vallejo, Mr. Colour, AK Real Colour, Mission Models, uh, Ammo Mig, and Tamiya. Um, and they seem to have a colour for everything under every brand, and that's a little unusual. But yeah, um, quite a few colours listed. 
and that is it and it shows you a picture there of the basic kit which with just its two uh, paint schemes right then so let's have a look at the decals so we've got two sheets of decals one with our stencils on and one with our covering the decals required for our paint scheme now in a change to how many are, I've worked in the past these are actually um, done by Caldegraph in Italy so these are going to be really nice decals let's have a look at the big ones first so these have got all the hallmarks of being Caldegraph they're nice and thin as a start and I can see where we've got some holes in the decal film on the inside of the decal and that's something Caldegraph do really well um, yeah we've got some very nice uh, decals here we've got the the German knockouts there which they've, they've done as crosses rather than swastikas which I think is an interesting choice um, yeah undoubtedly better than leaving them blank and at arm's length they certainly look like a swastika so uh, interesting way of doing it um, we've got all sorts of little things we've got the little markers there for the um, uh, propeller blades um, we've got stars and bars with cutouts um, we've got um, our checker that'll be interesting trying to patch that all together um, we've got a little section there that says cockpit and I've got to say that cockpit looks absolutely stunning so it is a complete decal well, what they've done is they've given you um, a complete decal or they've given you options which I didn't pick up on in the instructions so yeah that's individual dials and that is dials on a clear film and then you've got it coloured in as well i got to say I really like the coloured in one um, but if we've got bezels and things on the on the parts then uh, probably not not worth doing um, yeah interesting very interesting um, and we've got no guts no glory um, Rosie Beth uh, Rosie Rosie death too Rosie Beth too not sure um, and then we've got our little um, lady there yeah, nothing wrong with those. Really, really nice. Let's have a look at these. So these are quite closely crammed together. Unlike these, which are nicely spread out, these are really crammed in. So you've got bomb decals, you've got pylon decals, tank decals, left view decals right view decals that's a lovely touch you can cut that out and work on one side and know you've got all the decals to hand bottom view decals top view decals that's really nice also really expensive putting all that on really expensive yeah but nicely nicely done i love it really nice decals um you'll be able to get a magnifying glass and read all of those i have no doubt let's just prove myself right and grab my mag magnifying glass yeah yeah all of them are, re are readable that is exquisite really really nice decals um, wow love that Okay, next thing out of the box is our little envelope, um, which will have our photo etching. So let's have a look at this. Okay, um, so we've got some parts for the engine there, which is nice. We've got 
bits that we know get used in the wings. We've got our harnesses um, and some um, some areas where you want to see that the panels get bolted to, uh, to. So we've got some rib detail, um, very nice. And then we've got all these little bits and pieces, which I'm not sure I picked up exactly where they're going, but I think they're all in the in the wings. I think, yeah. Um, and then these little crosses, I'm guessing, are going on some of the bombs. So yeah, um, it's not excessive in photo etch, which is good, just where they clearly believe it's going to add something that they couldn't do in plastic. So we've got some control rods and some fine mesh and that sort of stuff. And it looks to me, yeah, the mesh is actually hollow. You can see through the mesh. So that's really nice. Um, they've got this horrible plastic stuff on. I do wish they wouldn't do that, um, but yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but to me that feels like a change of manufacturer of the photo etch. It has a very um, trumpeter feel to it, which means possibly Chinese, whereas it used to be made in Ukraine, so don't know. Might be guessing that completely wrong, but it does feel like it's different somehow. Right, that's our photo etch. Let's have a look at some plastic. So, plastic starts with our two fuselage halves. These are on the top of the bag. Wow. So, we've got all the panel lines and we've got all the rivets. Okay, so we're going to have to talk about rivets in a sec. Um, we've got some panels that are higher in profile than the others. Blimey. Well, whatever your view, this is a very nicely done bit of fuselage. We do have a little bit of flash on it, so not uncommon for mini art, but it's it's minor, it's just a quick scrape off. Um, and then we've got ejector pins to remove there. Uh, it's a little bit of tiny detail on the inside there. It's really nicely done. Um, yeah, I can. this is gonna be really good. Now then, rivets at 148 scale. This is down to modeler's preference. What we've got on here is a combination of recessed and raised rivets. Now some people will argue that at this scale you wouldn't even see the rivets so they shouldn't be on um, and I'd agree. Um, some people will argue that you know putting the rivets on breaks up the, the, the large monotonous areas of no interest uh, and gives you an impression of the, the model um, uh, as it should have looked as the real thing and, and gives you a realistic impression even though it might not be true to scale. And I'd agree with that. Um, some people would say they don't like the recessed rivets because the rivet should be flush or the rivet should be raised. Um, and I'd agree with that. And then other people say that they don't like the raised rivets because it's an absolute nightmare to put your decals on. And there's such a high risk of you uh, damaging them when you're, when you're sanding. And I'd agree with that. The, at the end of the day, this becomes the modeler's choice. Uh, what they do and don't like, and how they how they like to work. Personally, my preference is recessed rivets, so it's easy to work with, easy to put them back, um, and raised rivets when it can be done. Invariably, raised rivets look over scale anyway, but we do have a combination of recessed and raised in here. Um, the thing about recessed rivets, the one thing that detracts is that when you give this a wash, you you show up all the rivets. Whereas on the actual aircraft, if even if it's a flat rivet, you're gonna get a little ring of, of dirt around it. So you wouldn't see the center of the rivet, you'd see the outside edge of the rivet. Um, but at this scale, that disappears. So I think I quite like this, having all the rivets on. Um, I know it's not going to be to everyone's taste, but I like it. It gives you an impression of what that aircraft looked like. And ultimately, that's what, when I'm building a model, that's what I'm trying to achieve. So, yeah, I like that. Both parts are uh, really nice. Again, 
a little bit of a heavy seam, shall we say. Um, but otherwise, nice and crisp. There's no sink. There's no issues. Just a little bit of general cleanup. And notice that the sprue gates are all on your joining edge. They're not on the actual surface. So you, you cut them off there and then you sand them flush with that and they just disappear. Um, so again, another lovely, well thought out feature with the sprue gates all being on mating surfaces. That's lovely, really, really lovely. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's, got, it's gonna look cool. Right, let's take some photographs as we go and then you can take a closer look. So if you pause the video on the photographs, you can take a nice long look um, at the detail of the parts. Right, we're moving on now to our second sprue, and we know we've got, was it 1,500 sprues or something we've got to get through? So we need to crack on. Um, what we've got here is the wings and uh, the wing flaps, and oh my lord, that's lovely. Uh, ammunition there, ammunition boxes, guns, engine cowling parts, uh, and the um, engine sort of bulkheady type thing and some bits for the engine and what looks like part of the seat and uh, carrying on all the rivet detail blimey I don't think they've missed a rivet have they yeah so I personally like it like I say not not to everyone's taste but I personally like it and again all the sprue gates are on the mating surfaces that's lovely even where we've got the wing tip, it's the mating surface for the light. Um, so really, really nice. There's no obvious sort of canning, any st stressed um, surfacing or anything like that. No, I so I don't know whether there should be or shouldn't be, but there isn't any. Um, engine cowlings look really nice. Um, and they've moulded in one piece the bit that's got the, the funny shape. So. We haven't got any odd seams there, and it looks like the joining points, because they've put rivets along them, are all um, naturally panel lines anyway, so that's always a good thing. Um, seat detail looks nice, and look at the ammunition. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. So um, don't don't buy aftermarket and try and replace it with photo -X. Just use that. Um, you, you paint that in the brass and copper and then uh, give it a wash. It'll be stunning, that. Very, very fine, crisp moulding all the way throughout this. Uh, lovely detail on here. I mean, it, it, it looks almost 3D printed. It's that good. It Yeah, that is very, very nice. I have a little bit of surface scratching and that's because everything's in one bag. Um, I'll be putting these into individual bags as they go back in the box will be my plan So we've got really lovely detail on the inside of the um, Engine cowlings and and bits and pieces so that means you can show them Disassembled on the floor on a diorama or something and show all the inside detail off Isn't that lovely or you could do it halfway round so you can see some of it through the engine bay. Gives you lots of options. We've also got lots of detail in the top of the wings there. Um, so that's really nice. I think that's the wing top, yeah. Um, so I'm guessing that will be seen um, through the uh, gear bay. Um, flaps are two halves um, with locating pins yeah all lovely and the even the detail on the uh, guns it's so crisp it's like 3d printed resin it really really is it is masterful the molding of that very very nice
So next sprue out, this is A, and we've got landing gear struts, um, and we've got more wing parts. We've got the basic engine um, component, if you don't want to do the um, experience modeler build, um, and more engine cowling, again, for um, the more basic. So, yeah, if you're going to build it with the cowling on, this is... Um, this is perhaps the way to go. It's a bit simpler. It's not got the detail, but I bet the bet the fit is just as good. Um, yeah, look at that. You can see there, release agent, and that's why you wash your parts. Um, yeah, lovely detail again. Very nice and crisp. And again, every rivet mapped out on there. <laughs> really, really lovely. Can't see any issues with the moulding, um, there's no sink, there's no flash on these parts particularly. Um, they were hooked together, the sprue behind it was sort of caught on it and I had to carefully pull it apart. So it's definitely worth rebagging this lot as you, uh, as you go through your box and check you've got everything. So yeah, very, very nice. Uh, it's just lovely, really lovely. Next sprue out, we've mainly got engine parts on here and we've got our two propellers. Um, and, well, my first comment is we've got sprue gates on the blades, which I personally don't like. And, yeah, um, just means a lot of careful cleanup. Um, we've also got, it's a little bit rough around the edges. We've got uh, where the seams sort of sprayed away, but it is very, very thin. Shape is nice. Uh, and there's some nice detail on the spinner there with the bolt heads and what have you. Um, then when we come down to the engine, you've got some very fine moulding of the, the, the ribs there on the pistons. You've got a lot of connection points to clean up. Um, and then on the uh, nose of the engine there, some really nice detail. Um, got some very tiny parts there, as is... Always the case with a mini art kit. And then we've got these rings for the wiring. And yeah, they're quite... F I'm going to have to say it's flash because it's sort of bigger than seam, but you can see it's translucent and it sprays out. So you're going to have to carefully clean up every part, which again is not unusual for mini art. Um, a lot of clean up to do. Um, the pipe work is really nicely done. Very, very nicely done. Um, I guess I'm going to have to open up some of the ends, but what they've done is they've put most of the sprue gates on connection points again, so that's really good. Not all of them, mind. Um, and there is a fairly hefty seam running through it, which will need cleaning up. Um, and then we've got these, and you're going to have to be very, very careful removing that sprue gate from between those without snapping them, that's going to be a very tricky task indeed. And these are, I mean, they're quite flexible, but there's there's all sorts of flash and stuff over them. They they definitely need a, a lot of care and attention, those. They're a bit, yeah. Um, yeah, I... You, a lot of very careful cleanup on those. That is definitely going to be delicate work. And then we've got some other bits to go around the engine as well and some other parts that I can't really identify. So, yeah, um, nice, but a lot of cleanup. You can, I can see seam all over all of this. Okay, next sprues out of the bag and we've got all sorts of bits going on here. So we've got cockpit parts here and they're absolutely stunning. 
absolutely stunning. Those wiring looms are a real thing of beauty. That is such fine work. Uh, we've got some panels there as well and various bits and pieces that I can't necessarily identify all of them. Those I think are part of the tailwheel assembly but again look at the detail on them really really nice and um, we've got some slide molding going on here so this is the openings for our guns so that's really cool as well which terminate in the bulkhead and then you'll have the gun backs that we've already seen behind them um, we've actually got two tail wheel options which i'm not sure i picked up on in the instructions so you've got weighted and unweighted so that's perfect because that means um, you can model her in flight and have uh, not have a weighted wheel um, causing you an issue if you want to show it with the with the wheels down like coming into land or taking off or what have you um, and then we've got a collection of small parts and then we've got our wheels here and um, yeah, uh, this, I mean, it said three different types of wheels, but this is definitely two of them. Again, I didn't notice this in the instructions, but you've got two different types of tread. Um, and again, the sprue gates are on the mating part, so you're not going to have any cleanup. It's not going to damage the, uh, the um, tread patterns or anything like that. Um, these parts seem less flashy than the last ones we looked at. Um, then we've got this floor pan and the detail is just stunning. Raised rivets, the bulkhead there with the pipe work on it. Um, our pedals, which have got texturing on them. There are, there's quite a bit of flash on them as well. Um, then we've got our little um, board of dials and they are dep um, depressed, but there isn't bezels on them. So I think you get away with putting that decal over the top. Um, with copious amounts of um, decal softener, you should get that in. We've got some uh, flexible hose there and then the control stick, all very nicely done. To the, you know, the, the level of detail is really, really lovely. Um, you've just got some cleanup issues um, that, you know, is not untypical. If you're used to mini art kits, there's nothing here you won't have seen before. But yeah, nothing wrong with it really. Right, our next sprue out, we have two of all of these. So when we saw it in the sprue map, there was two of all of these, but they're all connected. So um, they, they've got the main tree uh, connecting them still. So we've got the third wheel here, which is the heavily weighted one. So the other two were, were not particularly weighted. So, okay, um, but this is with the gear weight on, so you can see. But that comes with just that one tread pattern. Um, then we've got um, different hubs to put in there, which is um, interesting. They're really nicely done. Um, then we've got all the various bits and pieces for mounting the bombs under the wings. Um, and we've got some of those here, the drop tanks and ordnance and um, the the paper one which I think has a real interesting look and then of course the bazookas and just look at the detail on the bazookas there really nicely done very very clever um, good great molding just looks fabulous um, the fins I thought they were individual on the instructions and maybe they are on some different ones um, but these are sort of halves um, but they still look fine um, they don't look too bad in the way of clean up and, and flash and the like this time. So yeah, not so bad. Um, nice and crisply moulded, no sink or anything. Well, it's a little bit 
untidy around the edges on some things there. I think that's a, is that an air scoop or something? Not sure. Um, but yeah. Um, but the bazookas, particularly these rocket launchers, really stand out as beautifully detailed. Final grey sprue now, and we've got a whole collection of parts here. We've got um, fuselage parts, we've got landing gear parts, tail parts, wing parts, uh, engine cowling parts, cockpit interior parts. Um, so we've got the seat there with the um, harnesses on, and, and that looks tremendous. There's no figure, so if you... Um, so the harness off version is if you're putting an aftermarket figure in. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of tiny parts. And again, we've got quite a bit of seam cleanup around these. Um, but again, lovely surface detail in terms of riveting, uh, but no texturing at all. But yeah, it all looks really nice. He's says but we have got sink in the tail so the tail piece is solid and then they've got this cutout bit here which closes it together and makes the the hinge and yeah just here this point here on both sides we've got some sink how noticeable it'll be when painted i don't know it's definitely noticeable in the light, in my light. That's the first sink we've seen. Um, we've got lots of tiny little interior parts here, and in the main they are nice and crisp, and the detail is lovely, second to none. Right, yeah, okay. We'll take some photos, and then we've just got the clear parts left. Finally, our clear parts, and we've got um, a lens for something, um, and the, the little bit that goes in the cockpit there, that's nicely done, and our little uh, lights that go in the tip of the wings, and then we've got our two parts for our canopy, uh, and I have to say, they're nice and clear, um, and there's some lovely detailing with rivets um, on the metal parts of the canopy, which is really nicely done um, and that is where my positive comments finish unfortunately the distortion is absolutely shocking absolutely shocking even in the windscreen where you'd expect the line to be straight as it went across and maybe curve slightly towards the end it's a wiggly line all the way through the clear parts are not good at all not good at all. Let me get my uh... yeah. You've got distortion all the way through that curve, but you've also got it in the flat part. And when you look at it, it looks all sort of crinkly and horrid. Uh, yeah, they are not good. They are not good at all. Unfortunately, um, I mean, yeah, um, and I think. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got some spidering in the screen there as well. Often the Achilles heel of a kit, clear parts, and this is definitely no exception. They are pretty awful, <laughs> to be honest. Not good at all. Sorry, Mini Art, they are not brill. Right, 
I think it's time for uh, our conclusions. So there you have it, the 1 to 48 scale P47D Thunderbolt from Miniart. What are my first impressions? Uh, wow, it's a typical Miniart kit, lots and lots of parts to achieve what other manufacturers would do with less parts. But the upshot of breaking things down into more components is often that means you get a better detail effect at the end of it because uh, you're building up depth in those in uh, in the build up of the parts that you you can't achieve by molding it all as one. So I like mini art. I'm a big fan of mini art kits. Um, let's start with uh, the instructions. Do they do what as modelers we're looking for? Do they take you from a, a, a box full of parts to a complete build? Um, and the answer absolutely is yes, they do. I found them um, a little bit confusing in places. I, I don't like the fact that they don't put boxes around the, around the steps. Uh, and so you're sort of fishing around and it's a bit busy on the page. Now that's, that's me. For other people, it might not bother them, but it does for me. Um, and you know you had strange things like halfway through building the wings we suddenly did the wheels and then we carried on with the wings so some strange goings on you've got the the detail wiring on the back page so if you've not done what you should do and read for your instructions first then you're going to have um, uh, bits and pieces that you've got to do or can do that you'll have missed earlier on in the build Build sequence seemed to make sense though. Um, paint instructions were clear enough, as were the decal instructions. And you've got plenty of instructions about painting and, and adding decals as you go through the build. Um, so yeah, I, I really liked that. So um, I would say the instructions were okay. Definitely not the best I've ever seen, but they're okay. And you know, a standard mini art offering. The plastic parts themselves, um, nice and crisply moulded in the main. Um, the only real issue with them was the amount of cleanup, which again is not unusual for mini art. There's a lot of um, seam that you've got to remove, um, some of it a bit chunky, a little bit of flash in places where, where the, you've crossed that boundary from it being seam to, to flash because there's just so much of it to clear off. Um, and mini arts plastic is a little bit on the soft side so sometimes some of those tiny parts can can break in that process and I certainly have concerns about some of the parts I, I saw about how easy it'd be to clean those up without breaking the parts um, so the, the plastic um, uh, the detail is really really stunning um, and putting aside what we talked about in 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 the review about um, rivets um, I think they've done a stunning job of the detail. Um, but the actual quality of the parts uh, is, is great, but it's not as good as Tamiya or recent Airfix, um, you know, because um, they're just that, just not quite got that crispness of the molding and, and all the cleanup that, that ne needs to be done. So a little bit, um, a little bit disappointing um, in, in places. But that's the only um, the, the amount of cleanup is the only thing you can level at them to be honest um, So that deals with that then of course, we've got the clear parts uh, clear parts uh, that, that are almost unusable to be honest the, the distortion in it is that bad I mean you can argue that there would be distortion in this part of the canopy But it certainly shouldn't be in that part there. Um, so the windshield is just dreadful um, it, it, it feels, it, when you look at it, it feels thick and it's sort of watery and bumpy and lumpy and, you know, uh, 40 years ago, uh, maybe, but, but not now. So I, I don't I personally think the clear parts are dreadful. Um, decals, beautiful, really, really lovely, uh, lovely decals, uh, very, very nice. And then of course we've got some photo etch, which adds detail where it's needed. They've, they've kept as much of it in the plastic as they can. So it's, it's uh, largely around some of the interior wind detail if you're that way inclined. 
but also we've got seat harnesses, which is a nice touch as, as there isn't a, a pilot included. What? Um, so in summary then, I think this is a very, very nice kit, um, but I don't think it's the best kit that's come out in, in 2023. Um, I, I think it's certainly up there with very nice kits that have been released, but it's still got a little bit, little bit of rough edges in places um so it, it's not quite a diamond in the rough it, 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 it but it's it's almost a diamond that's not quite finished being cut if you like um so yeah i, I think it'll build up to a lovely kit it's not for the faint-hearted it's certainly not for the beginner and i know this is the advanced set but i uh, i would say even the the basic set the level of cleanup is more than some people are going to want to do um so it's you know mini art is famous for a lot of parts you know the, the the running joke is that if you you know if you build a mini art kit you've got more parts than the original and uh i don't think that's necessarily true here they've given you lots of options and i think that's a real selling point here you've got you've got they've really considered people who are in the full spectrum of ability when it comes to modeling and i absolutely love that um, and we've got plenty of options. Uh, uh, you know, you could build this with the basic engine and the cowl on and then have the advanced engine sat next to it on a little frame as part of your display and it looks stunning. Um, so th there's, there's th things you could play with with this. Um, it'll lend itself nicely to 148 dioramas because of the level of detail they've put in some of the parts that you don't see when it's closed up. I think it's a lovely kit. I genuinely do. I'm looking forward to building it. I'm hoping someone comes out with some nuclear parts for it, though. Um, but otherwise, um, that's a that's a cracking little kit. So there you go. I hope that was useful. You now know what you get in the kit, and you've got my view of it. Um, I, I review a lot of kits, um, and over the years that I've had the channel, I've certainly um, reviewed a lot. Uh, and this was up there with some, one of the, the nicer kits that I've reviewed. So, yeah, well done, Mini Art. I'm looking forward to what else you bring out in your airplane series. That will be really cool. Thanks for looking in. You enjoy your modelling, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.